So are you guys ready for this evening? So do you know who's going to come up next? Do you know who's going to come up? No, 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 no. You don't know. You guys, guys don't know actually. Trust me guys, it's a treat to listen to him. And we can't talk about him with this energy. It's a treat today for all of you. You know, he's somebody who is, who is the reason why we all exist in this business. He's the reason why we all are gathered here. You know, he's a firm believer, firm believer in the power of thought and master plan. And this was his thought. You know, he had visualized this 11 years back when he started his journey. That one day, he will have an empire across the globe. He had imagined that he will have a family across the globe. And the very fact that we are gathered here today in this arena is because of that one dream that he had, that thought, that belief that he had. So that's the power of his dream that we all today are gathered in this arena. The DNA of our organization, Team Infinity, is relationships only and only because of him. He's someone who has always has an ear to listen. I still remember my first time when I went to his house. He's such a great friend. You know, you will not feel that like you're, you're meeting him. Thank God I didn't take his name. You, you will not feel that you're meeting him. You know, there's one quote, one nice quote written in his house. Okay, life is zipped about waiting the storm to pass. But it's about Dancing happily in the rains. It says so much, guys. You know, all the lifestyle that we know today, the brands, the way to dress up, the way to hold a drink. So he is the one who taught us all. You know, in fact, we all grew up listening to his stories from our great upline. So when I started this business, you know, AVP Kavita showed me the plan. Sachin Bhai, Sharfun, Kavita, and all the senior appliance of yours. They used to talk about their journeys and how they started and how they would go to his place and how they would learn every single thing from this man himself. So whatever we see today that Infinity has is his brainchild is his creation. If it wasn't about this vision, trust me, we were not here. Trust me. And we really don't know where we were today. So we should be really thankful for this moment, for you to make it a memory today. So if you want to see a networker, he is the example of true networker. Because whether it's a waiter or an MD of a company, he treats every single human being with the same respect, same dignity, and same sense of care and affection. And that's the man who we all belong to. That's our upline. That's our grand, grand, grand upline. So are you guys ready to receive our grand, grand upline? Our zero, 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 one. I don't nice think so you are nice. ready yet.
Guys, I have to tell you something more. The very fact, so, so you all saw the relationship of uplines and downline on this stage, right? How many of you were moved and touched by what you have been seeing for the last two days? The love, the care, the relationships. He is the reason why we know the value of relationships today. Trust me guys, it's not about what we talk. It's not about how we talk. It's about how this mesmerizing speaker is going to make you feel today. So guys, are you ready? Pooja, you think they're ready? You think they're ready? So are you guys ready for this evening? So do you know who's going to come up next? Do you know who's going to come up? No, 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 no. You don't know. You guys, guys don't know actually. Trust me guys, it's a treat to listen to him. And we can't talk about him with this energy. It's a treat today for all of you. You know, he's somebody who is, who is the reason why we all exist in this business. He is the reason why we all are gathered here. You know, he is a firm believer, firm believer in the power of thought and master plan. And this was his thought. You know, he had visualized this 11 years back when he started his journey. That one day, he will have an empire across the globe. He had imagined that he will have a family across the globe. And the very fact that we are gathered here today in this arena is because of that one dream that he had, that thought, that belief that he had. So that's the power of his dream that we all today are gathered in this arena. The DNA of our organization, Team Infinity, is relationships only and only because of him. He's someone who has always has an ear to listen. I still remember my first time. So are you guys ready? For this evening. So do you know who's going to come up next? Do you know who's going to come up? No, 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 no. You don't know. You guys, guys don't know actually. Trust me guys, it's a treat to listen to him. And we can't talk about him with this energy. It's a treat today for all of you. You know, he is somebody who is, who is the reason why we all exist in this business. He is the reason why we all are gathered here. You know, he is a firm believer, firm believer in the power of thought and master plan. And this was his thought. You know, he had visualized this 11 years back when he started his journey. 
that one day he will have an empire across the globe. He had imagined that he will have a family across the globe. And the very fact that we are gathered here today in this arena is because of that one dream that he had, that thought, that belief that he had. So that's the power of his dream that we all today are gathered in this arena. The DNA of our organization, Team Infinity, is relationships only and only because of him. He's someone who has always has an ear to listen. I still remember my first time when I went to his house. He's such a great friend. You know, you'll not feel like you're, you're meeting him. Thank God I didn't take his name. You, you will not feel that you are meeting him. You know, there's one quote, one nice quote written in his house. Okay, life is zipped about waiting the storm to pass. But it's about dancing happily in the rains. It says so much, guys. You know, all the lifestyle that we know today, the brands, the way to dress up, the way to hold a drink. So he is the one who taught us all. You know, in fact, we all grew up listening to his stories from our great upline. So when I started this business, you know, AVP Kavita showed me the plan. Sachin Bhai. Very nice things have been said about me. And I just want to tell you that as an upline, I consider myself nothing more than a street sign. You know what a street sign is? When you drive, you have a street sign, right? <clears throat> if you want to go to this destination, you got to go this way. And so many kilometers or whatever. Or you can go the other way if you want to go somewhere else. So I just like to tell all of you that over the last 12 years, I have been nothing more than a street sign. Because what does a street sign do? A street sign just points you in the right direction. But then the person traveling has to still finish the journey. You understand what I'm saying? So all I've done has been a street sign. All the success that your uplines have had, although they say it's because of me, it is not. It's their hard work. They have done it. They have traveled. They are traveling on that journey to their destination, which they have chosen. Because many people, I pointed them, but they're not here today. You understand what I'm saying? So my first point is, your upline can be nothing more than a street sign. Cannot make you successful. Can guide you and point you in the right direction. That's all, that's the maximum you can do. So how many of you have come here to figure stuff out. Be honest. This is very common in the early days, you know. I was once a participant just like you. It was an event in Pune. I had signed up on the 9th of August 2005. I call it my second birthday. And then for the first few months, I was figuring things out. Do you understand? Will this work for me? Can it really happen? And the thing is that my upline and me signed up in the same week. So we were actually doing it together. Not There was no upline, downline relationship as such. If you understand what I'm saying. You know? 
and it was the 9th and 10th of December 2005 that I was privileged to attend a two day training with 200 people in a ballroom at the Meridian Hotel in Pune. Okay? And trust me, my upline forced me to come. I was planning on not going. How he tricked me was, he told me, we're going in your car and you're driving us. So I couldn't get out of it then. <laughs> and he's my best friend, so. So, I picked him up. I think it was quarter to six in the morning. We drove to Pune and two days with the Titans. The privilege of, you know, listening to VP Arun George, VP Mahindra Kumar, VP Cherry and Matthew, AVP Balaji, <coughs> and AVP Manoj. And during those two days is when I really decided that I'm going to do this. That's when I took my decision. So, the first thing, let's clarify. I'm going to speak very basic language today. I'm not going to give you some high funda stuff, okay? Is that a lot of you feel or think that you took your decision when you signed up. It's not the case. I call it, the day I signed up, I bought my ticket to the football match. That's it. Or the cricket game. Do you understand? I just bought my ticket, that's all. I took my decision on the 9th and 10th of December. I went to my upline, shook his hand, said, watch me now. Watch me. Now it begins. That is when I decided. The click went off. I said, this is the way, man. I'm going to do it. And there's a book written by Sir Richard Branson. It's called Screw It, Let's Do It. I love that book. That's why I told him, yeah, screw it, let's do it now, man. That's it. Whatever it takes. So, what is a decision? We decide on things every day, don't we? We decide to get a gym membership. In fact, it's a good time to talk about decisions because the New Year's, we are in the New Year's, right? It's called the time of resolutions, right? We make a New Year's resolution every year, right? Oh, next year I'm going to, this year I'm going to do this, this and this. Most resolutions are broken in the first one week of the New Year. True or not? So we are in that one week right now. Today is the seventh. <laughs> the one week ends today. Over 95% of the world would have broken their own resolutions. So the first thing I want to share with you is that a decision has to be absolute. Do you understand? A decision cannot have this, these two words, it's called yeah, but. You know, I decided, yeah, but this happened, yeah, but, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, but. How many of you use this word, yeah, but? Yeah, but, you know. True or not? The world lives on these two words, yeah, but. Yeah, I know, but. A decision has to be unconditional. Because it's a promise to yourself. They say you can lie to the world, but you cannot lie to the man in the mirror. 
or you cannot lie to the person in the mirror. When you wake up every morning and you brush your teeth, you see yourself in the mirror, right? Can you lie to that person? Can you? You can't lie to that person. You can lie to anybody else, but not the person you see in the mirror who's looking right back at you. That person you cannot make a fool of. So a decision cannot be conditional. A decision has got no conditions. Do you agree with me or not? So guys, you've got to higher your standards. Why are you lying to the person in the mirror? Who are you fooling? You're fooling yourself. That's it. And there's something I learned very early in life. Many, many moons ago, when this, I didn't have this, I call it the one pack now, you know? It used to be a six pack at one time. But who needs six packs when you can have one pack? Right? Was I used to play badminton. Okay? Competitive badminton, state level. <clears throat> and I come from a middle class family. I've never starved or anything in my life, but <clears throat> my father was a flight steward with Air India, and my mom was a stewardess. Okay? And unfortunately, my father. You know, when I was very young, he used to fall ill a lot. He had ill health. So he used to go through long periods of time where it's called, you have medical leave and then you have something called leave without pay. You understand? They don't sack you, but they don't pay you either. Till you can come back to work. So during this, you know, challenging time, um, I picked up this game called badminton and I turned out I was quite good at it, okay? But I couldn't afford to go to, I couldn't afford to be coached, if you know what I mean, okay? And badminton is not a cheap sport, shuttlecocks cost a lot of money, okay? And then you have your rackets and when your strings break, you have to replace them. Let me put it this way, it's not cheap, okay? Back then, a box of shuttlecocks would cost two to three hundred rupees. I know right now it's not even money, but back then, two to three hundred rupees was a lot of money. And you use one shuttlecock in a game. If you play like four games in an evening, your half the box is over. And if you play a wrong shot, the shuttle may crush, then you go to replace a shuttlecock again. Okay? So anyway, but fortunately, in the club that I used to play in, it's called the Bandra Jamkhana in Bandra. By the way, guys, I don't, you know, I was born in Bombay, right? Yeah? No, I was born in Bandra. When people ask me where I'm from, I don't say I'm from Bombay, I'm from Bandra. Because Bandra is the only place you should live, actually. All these, all these places with end with L I N A, Dombivli, Kandivli, those places are not Bombay. Those are not Bombay. Bandra, that's why the pin code is 50. It's right in the middle. It's in the middle of everything. You understand? Yeah, that's my Bandra joke, sorry. It's a bad joke, but I, I have to say it every time. So bear with me. So, Bandra Gym, on Sunday, there used to be like, how many? Three to four ex-national champions who used to come and practice at Bandra Gym. On Sunday, early evening, I still remember, they used to come at about four o'clock. And that was my highlight. I would just go and watch them. They're playing against each other. 
used to watch them playing. And what a level of badminton they used to play. I used to just, I used to be like, wow. You know? And I started to learn watching them. And then, they were all nice people, very, very nice. And they used to have, each of them used to run a training camp, like a, like an academy, you know what I mean? So they used to keep telling me, Dave, why don't you join? So I told, there was one very, very kind man. He had won 14 national titles. Can you believe it? In doubles and mixed doubles with seven different partners. Every year, he would play with a different partner and win the title again. Man, that means something. Normally, you stick with one, per one person, right? That's how good he was. So he felt sorry for me. So after this, to finish or in between a break, he said, come, come onto the court. And he would start hitting with me. You know, play with me and give me tips. You know, you're taking it too late. Try doing this, your body weight, footwork. We call it court craft, you know. He taught me how to practice, how to do lunging, you know, how many steps I should take for each shot to cover the full court. And he corrected many, many flaws in my technique, okay. And it really helped, and he would play with me a little bit. They were very nice people. I was blessed. So, although I, I didn't go to an academy, I think I got helped. Because they, it was only because they saw my dedication. Do you understand? I would be there before them, waiting for them to come. They could see the excitement in my eyes when they started to, to come into the, the club. I would get them the water. Do you understand? After the game, the court gets wet with perspiration. I'd get the mop. I would mop it up for them. And basically, they just saw my dedication and they started to coach me without being paid. Once a week, told me what to do. Okay, this is improved from last week, but now you got to work on this, 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 and this. As you get tips, it's called tips, pointers. What were they? Street signs. And I would religiously practice whatever they told me to practice. They told me how many days a week I should go jogging, how much I should jog, how much I should sprint, what I should do in the gym. They were not there to do it with me. But they gave me instructions. Do you understand? And I gradually got better. I got better. And I became one of the top I used to be ranked 5 to 8. Seeding, you know? Seeds, you have seeding. So I used to, was never top 4. I used to be either 5, 6, 7 or 8. Mainly 5 to 7. I would keep floating. And there was this one guy. Man. This is juniors, of course. I'm talking, you know? I was a teenager. This is young. There was this one guy. He was so talented. He used to make me look like a monkey on the court. If I played him, I mean, he had mentally destroyed me. You understand? That time it was 15 points. And you could only win on your own serve. Now the rules of badminton have changed. It's 21 points and it's, it's table tennis scoring. You can win on the other person's serve also. And this guy, the racket in his hand was like a wand. I sometimes wondered whether he was carrying a racket or a wand. 
he would deceive me he was just better than me plain and simple and yet the strokes he played were unbelievable i didn't think it was humanly possible you know the angles he got and whenever i played him i was like mentally destroyed before i got on the court only because i had never taken more than 5 points from him 5 points you understand so the season got over and i went to my i call him my mentor not my coach the gentleman used to help me and i said i'm so unhappy should i start playing tennis instead and i don't think i'm very good at this because we are we are tennis courts also and i was good at tennis also i used to play tennis so i said should i do 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 you really think i can make it or should i focus on tennis maybe you know he told me a couple of things he said dave you are not the most talented player let me tell you this he said well i'll tell you what what your strength is you can grind it out you know what grinding it out is and you can you give it everything and he said that is your asset so what i want you to do is i want you to get fitter and faster because that you can physically do you understand it's in your control i can't teach you to be a magnificent stroke maker i can't do that either you you have it in your dna or you don't you know someone like john mackinro genius right you have guys like who just stay on the court and run 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 you know so what he told me to do he said i want you to go to the sports shop and you know you have uh that time you have anklets you know anklets which you can wrap around your so anklet and wrist like he said i want 1 pound is to me with a sand at the time and velcro tape to keep it to wrap it around he said i want you to start playing because when i was playing the other 6 days of the week i was the king of the club so i used to beat everybody you know they say but i wasn't playing against good players every day you understand what i mean the kind of competition that i needed to play against so he said number 1 i want you to start playing people two against one now those two people playing against me alone it becomes very tough you know that right one on one two on one even an ordinary two guys can can really beat you. you 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 know what i mean because they've got the court covered front and back so he said you will play two on one you know when you play them you will not smash don't smash you cannot smash in other words i just got to keep hitting it back or playing it in the front or hitting sideways but i can't kill you know the kill in in badminton you, you jump and you you kill it right so you are not allowed to do that and you will play them with 1 pound anklet on each leg and half a pound on each wrist he gave me that the task so i did it i went with my father on the scooter told dad i will buy this they want expensive so i put them on my thing and i became kuku i used to wait and do school also the class used to make fun of me so i used to go to school and under my socks i had the no i used to wear them over the socks and they asked me what are you doing school uniform no they, they i used to say no i have a uh, ankle and wrist pro- problem so i have to wear these the doctors told me so the principal um 
excused me wearing this. So like a mad person, I used to walk around everywhere with my wrist thing, even outside the badminton court. And I followed his instructions. And then the next season came. Okay? The first tournament of the next season. Now it's always, the first tournament is always of a new season. It's always been June. Badminton season would start in the rainy season. Indoor sport, right? So in June. And it was a state, state championship. We had three state selection tournaments. This was the first of the three. Now, everyone's a bit nervous because everyone's been working on their game in the off season. Okay? So you don't know. And then we're all young. So some guys grown two inches. Some guys not grown. You know, you shoot up, right, when you're a teenager. So it all makes a difference when you play the person. So I'm looking at the draw. I was seated number five, I remember. And I'm praying to God, please. Because the seeds, the eight, the eight seeded players, they start playing each other in the quarterfinals. Correct? Quarterfinals is a round of eight. So we beat all the ordinary guys, and then from the quarterfinals it becomes tough. You play against another seeded player. Okay? And you're praying. I'm like, please. I hope I don't have to play this guy. I'm hoping he's not in my part of the draw. So at least I have a chance of making it to the final. He'll beat me in the final, but that's okay. At least I'll I'll get the points, you know. And I look over there and bloody hell, I'm playing him in the quarterfinals. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Anyway, of course, when I'm playing the tournament, I'm not wearing my anklets, of course. Yeah? So, I felt playing the first three rounds, then pre-quarterfinals, then quarterfinals. So, I felt a little stronger. But it's hard for you to judge your own. And I'm playing against ordinary guys, you know? So, maybe, but that gut feeling was there that I'm feeling, feeling like I'm quicker, a little stronger than last year. And all my opponents in the changing room started saying that, Dave, you're playing well, huh? Well played. They complimented me on my performance. The people who had beaten in the four rounds. And then the quarterfinals came. And there he was, waiting for me, with a smile on his face. Come, Baba. I was with Bakra, huh? He used to call me his Grak. You know Grak? His customer. So he said, ah, my Grak came. Let's go, come on. We used to do a lot of uh, sledging in the locker room. You know? Are my Grak has come, come. And the match started. And it was strange. Long rallies. Long rallies. It's endless rallies. Back, back, front, back, front, back. Boom, boom, boom. And a lot of, uh, we used to call it side outs. In other words, I would serve, he would win the point. Then he would serve, I would win the point. So the score wasn't moving. You understand what I mean? Because back then you could only win on your own serve. And it was going on. It was quite a long match. And the umpire called out a score. He said, eight all. And I had never taken more than five points from this boy. Ever. It was eight all. That is when I started believing. I said, shit man, eight points, huh? And I started observing his body language. 
see the shots that he he, he would make that would land 2 inches beyond my reach and he would win a point now i was returning and he had to play one more shot two more shots to win the same point are you understanding me still playing the same strokes still playing well so i could start it, i could sense the frustration building in him he is looking at me like how dare you take that shot that's supposed to be my point in his brain you know what i mean i could i could sense that coming from him and then he started to go for riskier shots now he's going for the line instead of going for 2 inches inside the line he's now going for perfection and he started making mistakes because sometimes he's hitting it just outside i'm getting the point do you understand so i was pushing him outside his comfort zone physically and most importantly mentally you won't believe it i won that first game 15 15 i beat him i remember and i was like what the hell i'm freaking superman and i walked to the other side in the next game i beat him 15 10 and it came in the newspaper upset wadwani upsets i won't take his name is a good friend of mine and came in the times of india sports section small article was this one yeah but cut it out put it in your scrap book you know back in the day that was that's how would we we would do it you know into school and all that thing but you know what was remarkable is that the season went on right by the end of the season i was giving him 5 points do you understand he was struggling to take 5 points from me he became my grak and he was so disheartened he was so disheartened that two years later he quit playing badminton he couldn't be second best he couldn't handle it his ego couldn't handle it so what's the lesson he was a better player than me he was a better player than me he didn't put in the hard work god gave him too much of talent do you understand god gave him too much of talent if i had his game with my work ethic i could have been a special player i didn't have his talent but i'm going to share the lesson which is what my mentor told me he said dave remember one thing in life success is a decision success is not luck you can't luck you can't get lucky and become successful and he he quoted one thing from a famous boxer Joe Fraser who fought Muhammad Ali 3 times you know a great boxer a great human being he used to call him smoking joe smoking joe fraser he was world champion heavyweight he beat ali one fight the first fight he actually beat muhammad ali i mean the two of them used to box it wasn't a boxing match it was a bloody war literally war that's how intense their rivalry was although they were good friends as well 
but man when they got in the ring it was war and my i should call him my coach told me one thing george foreman once said not george foreman joe fraser sorry joe fraser once said he said you know what you can plan a fight you can have a life plan but when you get in the ring you don't know how it's going to go and it boils down to your how you react and your reflexes and he said if you cheated on your preparation in the dark of the morning why dark of the morning it means you woken up before the sun has come up if you cheated on your preparation he was talking about physical preparation starting to train he said if you cheated on your preparation in the dark of the morning well let me tell you now you will be found out under the bright lights do you understand when the world is watching under the bright lights if you've cheated in the dark of the morning and not prepared you'll be found out under the bright lights and that's going to be humiliating and embarrassing so success is a decision so so congratulations all of you for taking this fantastic decision to sign up but have you really decided that's the question have you really decided because success is a is a decision i had i didn't realize this but i had decided to become better during that one season do you understand what i mean and in the off season i trained harder than i'd ever trained in my life under the dark morning i used to wake up early i had to go to school so before catching the school bus i used to get my my jogging sprinting all done come back shower and then go to school so i call it the 3 d's guys the decision and then everyone wants something called delight delight means ah now where is it where is it it's not happening where is it where is it you can't cheat on the second d it's called discipline decision discipline then you get delight do you understand what i'm saying decision discipline you have the discipline every single morning after school finish my homework go back practice with my anklets on because if i cheated on it who am i cheating on i'm cheating on myself true or not i knew it had to be done i was told what i need to do you can call my coach he was my upline he used to meet me once a week and tell me do this do this do this and do this he wasn't there to make me do it he was a professional badminton player he used to practice and coach other people where he got paid but he would give me 15 15 minutes 20 minutes half an hour once a week on a sunday and i followed what he said 100% because i knew this guy 
was a legend. I'd be stupid if I did not listen to what he told me to do. And I had a decision to make. And I used to come home. And you know, I used to wear two pairs of socks. And when I used to take my socks off, I used to go to the bathroom and I used to do it like the dobies do, na? they squeeze your socks. And pers- sweat would just be dripping. My shoes, after wearing two socks, was still wet. And my mom used to keep it in the balcony. So that by the next day, it had dried up. Blood, sweat and tears. You understand me guys? There are no shortcuts. If you don't have the discipline, pack it up and go home right now. It's never going to happen for you. And it's a daily discipline guys. You can't say, oh, I trained hard one week. Bullshit, it never worked for you. You got to keep doing it. You got to keep pushing yourself. But in this business, physically as well, because all of you are probably working, not all of you are full time. So what's the sacrifice? Your TV time, your sleep. After you come back from work, you think I don't know how it feels? You think I was just born on the stage, is it? I was sitting in the chair like you guys. So, the discipline. How many of you want to know my journey when I started? Yeah? I happily share it with you. So I was a full time, I used to be an investment banker. I don't know whether you all know this. And I used to work 14 to 16 hours a day. Okay? And I was well paid by international standards, not Indian standards. Okay, I won't go into the money part, but I was, I was well okay. And in 2003, I was unfortunately diagnosed with lymph cancer. Okay? And I did my treatment and I recovered. But the illness changed me. It made me understand the value of something that I had not truly grasped. And that was, what about time? I was so busy chasing money all my life, I realized that my quality of my doctor told me. She was my college sweetheart. She's one of the top oncologists in the world today. She went to medical school, I went to business school. She told me, Dave, you're not burning the candle at two ends, you're burning it at four ends. He said, you cannot push yourself this way. Youngest vice president, youngest MD, top performing fund manager, fantastic. Would you want to die? She asked me. She said, you got to, you got to change your life. And that's when I understood that I bloody had no time. I started putting on weight. You know what I mean? So this was 2003. So I said, I won't say like, but I only knew finance. So I started my own hedge fund. I quit my job. When I started my own business, my own hedge fund, I was working even harder, man. (laughs) Because now it's my business. (laughs) You understand? So that wasn't working either. I said it wasn't, it was making me money, but it wasn't fulfilling my objective. You understand what I mean? My objective was, I want to have better quality of life, not just money. Of course, I want more money also, but I also want better quality of life. 
And then 2005, somebody drew a circle and said, this is you, this is your left, this is your right. And if you carry on doing it like this, you can live happily ever after. Like the fairy tale, no? Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a princess. Right? And then there was another handsome prince who came on a white horse. They both sat on the horse, maxed out, and lived happily ever after. Sound familiar? So that was the plan I was shown. Come on my horse, we'll ride together into the sunset and we will be, we'll have time, money, freedom, everything. That's what got me, you know that. <laughs> I swear, I said, shit man. So you know why I signed up? Of course, I love my friend, but you know the real reason why I signed up? Nobody wants to know. Listen to these three words very carefully. Just in case. You know what this means? Just in case this thing is true. I don't want him getting rich without me. I'm doing it. I'm, I mean, chalo. <laughs> How many of you signed up just in case? Come on, be honest. How many of you in the crowd signed up in this business just in case Are just in case boss <laughs> so it's okay it's good to sign up just in case <laughs> it works <laughs> so I signed up just in case <clears throat> but then I was a very bad online I wasn't reading the books I wasn't watching the I'm like Boss, I have been a, I went to an Ivy League school. I used to manage my upline's money for him. He said, now you're going to teach me how to make money, is it? Come on, man. I'd always been smarter than him. The guy was a total duffer in school. So he failed one year also, okay? We call it, he took rest for one year. Uh -huh. So, so, I was the one who used to, so like, come on, man. But then, 9th and 10th of December, I actually emptied my cup. I started reading, watching, and I, I got so much knowledge, and it, those books and those DVDs, Change the way I think about the business. You understand? And if you guys have been doing that, that's like, I tell people who, I have people who don't listen. Ah, yeah, I got no time to read. But show the plan for me now. You're lucky I'm not your upline. There'll be no plan shown. If I know that you're not reading and watching, don't have to finish everything, then I show the plan. Simultaneously. You understand? I will drop you like a hot potato. Say, boss, use your product, be happy, see you, don't waste my time. Thank you very much, cheers. Because you're trying to, you're trying to do a 100 meter sprint in under 10 seconds, and max out. But you're not taking the time to tie your shoelaces. How stupid are you if you're not doing that? What does the runner first do? He doesn't just tie shoelaces, he puts a double knot on it. I used to do knot over knot on the badminton court. Because you don't want to trip and fall on your face, right? So my daily discipline in the business started. I used to read, watch the DVDs, attend the trainings, you know. I started to seek, you know. Emptied my cup, not fully, but some of it. <laughs> you know that nobody empties their cup f f fully. Something always remains inside. 
some kachra always remains <clears throat> but every day even when i was busy and couldn't show plans because my work schedule was horrendous or i was traveling to america and to england and hong kong how can you show a plan when you're the only guy in the team so what did i do i used to go to the virtual office i would learn two three things about the vo every day do you understand how do i fill out a crf form in case there's a problem yes i would learn about the products every day i would dedicate an hour even if i was not physically doing the business i was learning about the products the policies and procedures i went through the com plan in detail you know the financial plan that we show we cannot explain the whole com plan the person will lose their mind man so started learning and my product knowledge went up i became self efficient i didn't need my uplines help for many things okay and on the days that i was free if i didn't do five plans in a day it's like i had not even broken a sweat you know what breaking a sweat is right they say he won the match without breaking a sweat it means no effort it happened easily so five plans and your uplines at the back have done the same thing i remember kavita and sharfoon and vivek and sachin they would come to my house late in the night gautam all these boys here yeah, would come to my house late at night seven plans eight plans 10 plans till bloody midnight going at it and they okay this is my new downline it's come for a drink now you have to switch them on okay so i was <laughs> my job became that then but i did plan after plan after plan after plan after plan now how many of you consider yourselves amateurs in the business you know amateur right you have amateur and professional so how many of you are amateurs okay keep your hands up those of you who think you are amateurs now i no no keep your hand up keep keep i ask you one question have you got a 100 rejections put your hand down then when 100 people say no to you na congratulations you have become an amateur networker So during doing all these plans I achieved amateur status in the business unknowingly I crossed the 100 people say no but let me let me explain to you what's going to happen how many of you have a name list name list hot warm cold right if your applicants have done their job that's what you should be doing right hot zone warm zone cold zone they have not taught you the right i'm very kavita i'm very disappointed yeah they don't know about the fourth list it's called the suspect list you know told you about this that's why they brought me here to explain to you there's a fourth list that list is the most important list suspect suspect was once a prospect who now is suspicious about the business you understand now that the thing about the suspect list is that they are also in the business actually 
but their job is to phone up all the common friends and tell them mat karo mat karo fast jayega fast jayega they going to call you up they going to talk to you about something whatever you do don't do it don't do it don't do it don't do it. and they also have meetings when they sit and they will stab you in the back kutta sala vin kya what do you think he is but the thing about the suspect list is that you know why they are suspects they even don't know why but i'll tell you the real reason why i figured it out after 12 years i know the truth it is because when you showed them the plan and you said ah in the fifth year happily ever after max out and then you will earn crores of rupees they are looking at like how dare you in their mind they are thinking only one thing how dare you how dare you tell me that bloody 20 years of bloody education and all these decades of work experience that i'm a donkey and you're going to become a millionaire drawing circles are you mad and you tell them i'd put the pen down after the plan guy saying i don't think this is for me oh lord if you've not heard that then you're a virgin you're a virgin in the business please lose your virginity very quickly and get on with it <laughs> okay and you know what i would tell them i would tell them you know what i used to be excited all the time while doing the plan because actually when i was doing the plan for them i call it a plan you 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 you, you may call it a financial plan or a presentation whatever you call it you know why i call it a plan i say show the plan not show the presentation show the plan because that's my plan for myself that's my plan that's my life on that paper do you understand me that's my life i'm showing you the next 5 years of my life it's my plan and all of you have seen the lazy man's guide or the donkey's guide to financial freedom the five years we do right yes or no please i'm, I'm getting scared over here okay good so the first year if everything goes very wrong 20 right we draw that 20 b so yeah b so after like three months i had crossed 20 so i tell them you know what i have only so many months in the business and i'm already on my way from year 1 to year 2 the guys looking at me is guys gone freaking mad see see i'm already i'm already ahead man i want to do it faster than 5 years then i crossed 200 that day i took all my friends out for a drink i said man i'm already crossed my year 2 target on to your three and they don't look at me man they were like this guys then they started to say dev i think i think you can do this huh i think you're going to do it many of them had signed up but were sleeping and many of them i just said no to me only but let me get back to the suspect list you don't realize this but it is the most important list actually it's as important as your prospect list so you will find after some time that your suspect list will be longer than your prospect list it's a very good sign clap for yourselves very good sign it means you're on the path you're on the path 
Now, you will have suspects. But then from that suspect list, this is a very elite status. Okay? There will be a few of these guys who will turn out to be ripe assholes. They will make it their life's ambition to destroy your name, your reputation. Understand? They will take, they say in English, they will take shit to another level. Do you understand what I mean? Now these guys are your diamonds. You don't realize that you hate them. They are your diamonds, man. They are the... You have... When you get those guys, then you've gone to another level on the ladder. So I had these two guys. <clears throat> and they used to sit at the local club and all they would do is talk shit about me. Oh, this, that, oh, now this is happening, that is happening, oh, you know, about this about the company, you know, this, that. <laughs> it became so bad. Okay. So, they basically, this is the club I grew up in, huh? I used to, that's the club I used to go practice by badminton and all. So this club, there was this one guy from the group. We are all old friends, man. It's not like I know these guys. I've known them for like years and years. He came to me one day and he's saying, Dave, these guys talk a lot of shit and all, but show me your business. I want to see. So I was like very happy. And he's a well-liked person. Everyone liked him. Even I liked him. So I showed him. He looked at me and said, this is fantastic, yeah. And he signed up on the spot. He called the bank, credit card, on the spot. Triple header he bought. Back in the day, that time, you didn't have your seven, it was only, maximum was triple header. So triple header, bought. So I'm Kush. Then I went to Hong Kong, I came back. And I told him, okay, man, nameless, come on. Let's get started, start showing the plans. And this guy, he couldn't get anyone to the table here. So I'm like, why? I said, one day I sat with him. I said, what's the problem? I don't understand. I mean, you're the kind of guy who pick up the phone and even I would come to the table. People trust you, like you. They don't like me, but you're different. You know what he told me? That these two assholes at the club had told everybody that don't even go and meet Dave. Because he'll put a spell on you and before you know it, your credit card would have come out and then it will be too late. So like black magic, you know? Jadu Tona. Can you believe it? This poor chap is trying to call people and they say, no, 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 no. We don't even want to. I told him to tell them, don't bring your credit card with you. Leave it at home. Just come. And I'll pay for the bloody coffee. What's your problem, man? So this is the level of destruction that these two assholes have done to me. You must find these guys. Find them, very important. Because any time when I was down and I felt like quitting or I doubt, I would pull out that list and look and say, can you imagine how happy these two guys will be? No, no, screw it, carry on. Carry on. 
Carry on. And you will come to this. It's called the hump, the bump in the road, speed breaker or whatever. Or in India, it's not speed breaker. It's the, what, khadda, or the, huh? suspension breaker, I call it. Yeah? You will. So, I carried on, carried on. And then, plan after plan after plan, then I became professional in the business. You know what professional is? What's professional? Amateur is 100. Professional is 1,000, ladies and gentlemen. I reached, I turned pro, as they say. I turned professional. But in the bargain, I also managed to max out. I also managed to max out in the bargain. And I started building the UK market. United Kingdom. Yeah? And my first sign up, a very good friend of mine, VC Keith Pereira, he also just came in blind, out of pure faith and trust. So Keith and Tally are the two who built the UK. And it was Keith's son's birthday, little Sammy. And I went and uh, to buy him a gift before I left for India. But I had, before leaving for England, gone to the Mercedes showroom and booked my E-class Mercedes, which was going to be, which was going to be ready when I arrived back from England. I had planned it like that. So the registration and all, and I got a special number plate at that time. I'm sure all the people, all your uplines, remember that that was their first nice car that they they sat in and drove. It was number 5555. So Shah Rukh Khan had got triple five, 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 five. I got five, 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 five. Five over, just in case. <laughs> 20 is better than 15, no? five, 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 five. So the dealership had done all, all this and prepared and everything. So while buying the gift, I had to buy a gift for his daughter also because she would cut the birthday cake and she would get upset. She was younger than you, a small little guy, Sammy. So easy. So I had to buy two gifts. I had to buy both the kids a gift. <laughs> so bought them. I bought him, I still remember, he still has it, I'm told. Oh, he's a teenager now. It was a lovely monkey. Like a monkey soft toy, you know? It was really nice. And I, when I gave it to him, I said, Sammy, this is a monkey to remind you of your father because your father is a monkey. So, it's, you know, when daddy's not home, you can hug the monkey instead. <laughs> so, so, and I was going to, you know, I was at this shop where they have all this fun stuff, you know, fun stuff. And I saw, Fake shit. You know what fake shit is? It looks just like shit, but it's made from like plastic or something. So you can play a prank on somebody, you know, you can put it on the floor and they say, what is that? Then you just go pick it up. <laughs> so it's fake, not just shit, dog shit. Okay, but it looked so so real. I was like, wow. Let's buy some shit today. So I bought these two beautiful, they looked, you know, even, let me not get into shit, forget it. They looked like they were fresh. 
like a freshly baked cake, you know. It looked beautiful. So I bought, I bought two, I gift wrapped it. And the next day I flew back to, to India, picked up my car and it felt so good. I drove down Carter Road in my car and that time Mercedes was quite rare. You see a lot on the road now, but back then, then a nice number plate and that fresh smell of that leather, you know, beautiful. And I had a sunroof, so I put the sunroof down, I like bl blasted the music, Bose sound system, or the Harbin Cardin, I think, and I was in seventh heaven. I had achieved the third D, delight. But the second D took the longest, that was the discipline. And then, I went to the club. And the club had a parking lot. And my car's got that, those flowers we put on it, right? When it's a new car. I had already broken the coconut and everything, done. And I parked the car. Now, I live in a small neighborhood. Bandra is small and this club is even smaller. Okay? All the word starts going around. Oh shit. He's bought a car. It's called envy and jealousy. It is the mindset of very middle class sad people who don't like other people to make it in life. They want them to stay exactly where they are. Correct? Because I should have become a flight steward like my father. How dare he? Do you understand? Quietly, I went, sat at my same table over there, did not say a word, with the Mercedes keys on the... Waiter came, ordered the drink, and slowly, people started to come and congratulate me. Hey man, well done, yeah, yeah, really nice car. Because there was only one Mercedes parked in the whole of the club parking lot. And everyone, and these are, and these are people who come there every day. So like, hey, we know exactly whose car belongs to whom. Because these are regulars, right? Can you, can you visualize what I'm saying? So suddenly there's a new car, and they'll ask the watchman, the gate guy, oh, who is the car? Dev Sahib ka. So slowly the mamas, people in the bar, in the restaurant, all well wishers, hey, nice car man, nice car. And then, my two favorite assholes walked in. Oh, oh baby. And, They also had to congratulate me. Correct or not? They had to come up and they had to congratulate me. So they did. Although they had a smile on their face, they tried to seem as genuine and, you know, I knew what was going on in their head. That was like a bad day for them. A bad day. The worst kind of day. Bugger did it. So they came up and congratulated me. And I had the two gift wrapped waiting for them only. They were on the table next to the Mercedes keys. So I said, you know, I want to thank you. So he said, I don't understand. No, no, no. I said, I want to thank you. Because I couldn't have done it without you two guys, man. I would never made it. You guys are the reason I have this car today. 
and they were like in a state of confusion shock and they were saying in english called being bewildered they were totally bewildered what is he talking about all he's done is screw him all the way and he's thanking us now i said guys and i took the liberty of buying you a little token of my appreciation okay basically it's a small gift it's nothing big but it basically represents what you mean to me and what you have done for me it's a small gift it's a token basically what you mean to me and what you have done for me and then they opened it yeah baby that's when that gave me more pleasure than driving the mercedes so guys please don't buy shit i was a little brash and i had a little more ego then i have now mellowed mellowed down and i am affection affectionately called grandpa now by my downlines they say you become now you become soft and all this earlier and i was a freaking tiger you understand i would get angry and all now i don't get angry that much you know i say chhodo yaar forgive and forget but like adi said there's only one thing that really matters and i shared it with him on the ship and recently i fell ill again by god's grace i recovered and my doctor told me this in new york she said dave on my bad days when i was going through my <clears throat> my treatment I used to fall very ill and feel horrible she just told me one thing she said if you can take it you can make it so are you guys ready for this evening so do you know who's going to come up next do you know who's going to come up no 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 you don't know you guys, guys don't know actually trust me guys it's a treat to listen to him and we can't talk about him with this energy it's a treat today for all of you you know he is somebody